So I've had many people ask me how I actually built this computer and how it works. So I just made a video explaining the process. At first we did something to signify a 1 or a 0. I decided to use full and empty belts of hydrogen. At the lowest level a computer is just an arrangement of logic gates and I'll explain how I managed to make each of them work only using belts and splitters. The simplest one is the OR gate. It has two inputs and one output. That is on as long as one of the input belts is also on. As you can see here, one splitter is enough to get that to work. You just need to connect the two input belts into a splitter, connect the output and have an overflow belt without priority so the system doesn't clog up if both the inputs are on. The AND gate is also easy. You just need the exact same setup except that you turn on the priority on the overflow belt, with the output now only being on if both the inputs are activated. Really challenging was the NOT gate. You need something that has an output if there isn't an input, and no output if items are coming in. Inverting a belt like that took me a while to figure out, but eventually I came up with this design that, at first, tries to fill the incoming belt with deuterium, takes what's left of the deuterium and tops that off with hydrogen. At the end you can remove the deuterium with a filter and what you are left with now is a sort of negative image of the input belt. You can pause the video if you need to take a closer look. At this point I should clarify that I built this thing a few months ago, so while I was working on it the update that introduced stacking came out and it turns out that you can use stackers to make a slightly simple design that only uses hydrogen. For this one, you start off with a merger, where on one side you have the input coming in with priority, and on the other side a double stacked belt of hydrogen. What happens now is that if the input is off, the double belt will go into the tank, but if it's on, only a regular belt, so the input, will go in there. Now you can just attach an AND gate to two outputs of the tank, and only get an output signal when two belts worth of hydrogen are coming out of it. So only if the input is off. Again, I recommend pausing if you are crazy enough to build something like this yourself. You may have noticed that in order to get these gates to work, you need some supporting belts coming in or out. In order to manage those, you can just attach them to a logistics station and use drones to balance the hydrogen supply. In a bigger system like the computer, I even had to build some storage towers so that the stations receiving the hydrogen are always full. With the deuterium in the original knot gates, things were a bit more difficult, but I just ended up using a tank inside a closed loop for each gate. Now, let's move on to the actual build. At the beginning, there has to be some kind of input device. I decided to have the user put in two 8-bit numbers and an operator that is either a plus, a minus or a multiplication sign. In order to have some meaningful feedback on what you put in, I built some 7 segment displays for the numbers, where if you connect a belt, it shows a 1 and gives an output. If you disconnect the belt, it shows a 0 and doesn't output anything. I did a similar thing with the operator, it just turns on the entire symbol. I used traffic monitors that light up if items are flowing through them. Directly after the input, there are a few switches that send the signal to different parts of the computer depending on the operator. When you are adding or subtracting, it goes this way, to the first actual logic unit. At this point I should probably mention that negative numbers in binary are kinda weird. Basically you just take a positive number, invert all the digits, so ones become zeros and zeros become ones, and then you add one. What you have now is a binary number that if you put it into an adder, it acts as if you were subtracting it. I have a great video linked in the description that explains that and also a lot of the basics of logic units that I won't cover in this explanation. Anyways, uh, this whole negative number inverting thing is done in this area, where it checks if you want to subtract the second number and if you do, it will make it negative. After that, it adds the first two numbers in this area. However, if you are subtracting and the second number is bigger than the first number, the result will be negative. In which case there is this monstrosity that converts back from a negative number into a positive one and directly sends the negative signal to the display if the number was smaller than zero. I'm not sure if that's really necessary, but I built the rest of the computer without negative numbers in mind, so I just didn't want to take any risks. Technically, this is the calculation part all done, 
the output of the circuit will already be the correct result of whatever was put in, it's just in binary. For some reason past me thought, that wasn't enough, so the rest of this entire half of the planet is only there to convert from binary to decimal. Since the number is only 8 bit, so at most 255, it's enough to divide by 100 and 10. And look at the results. About a quarter of the planet is taken up by the divide by 100 step. In case you want to replicate this for some reason, here are some scuffed schematics that I made. These four bits at the end there are the first digit in binary. The same goes for dividing by 10, which takes the remainder of the previous step and moves it to this part over here. And again, here are the schematics. The process of getting those was actually to just take a regular binary divider and remove all the components that weren't needed for a fixed divisor. Since it's only dividing by one number, in this case just 10, the result will be the second digit and the remainder will be the third digit. Now there are three 4-bit numbers, each one ranging from 0 to 9, corresponding to a digit in the output. These modules above the dividers are there to take those numbers and give out a signal on one of 10 belts. So one belt for each number, again from 0 to 9, that then leads into the output display. This might look really complicated, but basically this is just a lot of splitters, where all the 30 input belts from the three digits are split into 7 belts, leading to every segment of the 7 segment display. And in order to get the right symbol, some splitters just aren't connected to the display, kinda like read-only memory. That's everything on this side of the planet taken care of. Now let's move on to the other side. Here the only thing is the multiplier. When you multiply two numbers, the switch at the beginning sends the signal into this monstrosity. It's basically on-paper multiplication with logic gates. Those are the schematics I used. I feel like this is a good opportunity for me to say that I didn't know anything about circuit design before I started this, so there might be something terribly inefficient about this whole setup. Anyways, once the multiplier is done, the result is again sent into the decimal converter. In this case, I actually kinda cheated with the 8-bit limit. It is actually possible to multiply two numbers and get a 10-bit output. So yeah, I think that's everything. There is a safe download in the description if you want to check it out, and I dare you to build something even better. This build mostly uses outdated designs, and I'm sure that with updates to the game and some actual memory, maybe someone will be able to play Doom on a planet-sized computer one day. Please subscribe, building the computer and making this video took so much fucking time.